Yo, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's Egal Talks Football. We're back again with another video. Hopefully, you guys are well. Today, we got a lot to talk about. We got to talk about Bakayo Saka's injury and if he's going to make it versus Manchester City. Would you even risk him versus Man City? Let me know in the comment section. We also have some potential January transfer news that have just come up. Yes, transfer windows around the corner. I know we just finished the summer transfer window, but the January transfer windows around the corner. It's already the 5th of October, so they're getting these deals started. They're starting to get the groundwork done for I'm hearing Ivan Tony links. I'm hearing Pedro Neto links. And I'm even hearing Timber links. And I'm not talking Yuri and Timber. I'm talking Quinton that plays for Fire Nord. He's a midfielder. And yes, he is Yuri and Timber's brother. On top of everything else, we got to talk about some of the things going on also around Arsenal. But the main point for today's video is the Bukayo Saka stuff and the transfer news. Let's get into it. Yes, 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 people, what's going on? So even though Bakayo Saka is currently injured and we don't know his status for the upcoming Manchester City game, he was still selected for the England national team. It doesn't make any sense. Gareth Southgate doesn't make any sense. Bakayo Saka needs to pull out of this, uh, this uh, international break. Yes, they're facing Australia and Italy for Euros qualifier and an international friendly. He Only one of those games are actually important, so he could probably rest for those games, but I don't know why he picked him. Southgate had this to say on why he picked him. He was he, when, when asked about it, he said specifically that he thinks that Bakayo Saka's injury is not is something that he needs to worry about yet, and he's going to be further assessed by Arsenal in the coming days. So basically, Arsenal haven't told him that the injury is bad enough where he can't get selected yet. So could this mean that he's going to play? Could this mean that Bakayo Saka could actually be given an opportunity to play this weekend? I want to know what you guys think in the comment section. But let's get, there's more. There's more. There's always more. So forgetting about uh, that right there, you also have that Bakayo Saka is in doubt for the Man City game after the injury. Uh, they're saying the injury is not seen as serious at this moment in time. That's that's what's being reported at this moment in time. They don't see the injury as a serious injury. Although, of course, this is th there's further reports from Samuel McBell on this topic. So I'm just going to show you guys what those further reports have said, right? So these are the further reports. Bokayo Saka suffered a suspected hamstring tweak against Lens. Uh, although this is, I'm paraphrasing here, but they, they will undergo more uh, in the medical testing. And of course, Thursday, following the scan on Wednesday, they'll, so they will see if they if they needs if they need to have more tests done or more work done to see what happens. They also had more added to this that as of Wednesday night, is not been completely ruled out of playing on Sunday uh, against thing. This was more that was reported by Samuel McBell on the Bakayo Saka situation. We currently don't know if Bakayo Saka is going to play, but there's also been some more reports from ITKs and, uh, and so on and so forth, stating that this is a minor uh, strain of his hamstring and that he will face a late fitness test on the weekend. This doesn't mean he's going to play, but this is just a, a, a late fitness test at this moment in time. And as you can see, it's similar to what Samuel McBell was saying. So we're just going to have to wait and see what happens here and how things progress. But at this moment in time, it is very, very concerning. Will Bakayo Saka play versus Manchester City on the weekend? Will he not play versus Manchester City on the weekend? We will have to wait and see. At this moment in time, it looks like he might not play versus Manchester City. And my question to everybody is, do you risk Bakayo Saka and play him in this game to further his injury and to then have him out for more of an extended period. I think if it's a situation where he's fit and ready to go and he's 50% there, we're, it's too much of a risk to have him out there to further himself and injure himself more. Maybe we should, one, make sure that he doesn't play in the international break. And number two, is it worth it? Is it worth it fully risking him if he's not 100% fit? 
That's my question to everybody. Is it worth it? Would you risk Bakayo Saka if he's available, but he's not 100% fit? I know it's one of the biggest games of the season versus Manchester City, but once again, I have to state, if we go into this game and Bakayo Saka gets further injured, we will only have ourselves to blame, and that could cost us more than anything else. I just have to, I just have to make that blatantly clear. Now, understandable, understandable that some people would still risk it, and I understand why some people would still risk it. It is, it is, it, he is one of our best players, and I honestly, I wouldn't risk Bakayo Saka playing in this game if he's fifty percent fit and he can further injure himself. If he is a hundred percent good to go and he said he's good to go, doctors gave the clear, everything is good, and he's and he's somewhat healed, and also he can play maybe like on a minute restriction where we have to sub him off after a certain amount of time. But if he's going into the game with any level of strain, understand that running at fast paces can cause more strain on that injury. So I don't want him to do that. Now, before we get into some of the transfer news, I'm just going to run through some of the news from, from the Arsenal website. So you can see here that Arsenal have given uh, uh, Miles uh, one of our academy youngsters, a new contract. So that's great to see that we're tying down our academy youngsters. Miles is a up and coming academy player. And of course, one of our most promising attacking options that is coming through. Also, David Rea has been nominated for one of the saves of the month uh, in the Premier League. We also have, of course, the four England players, Eddie Nketiah, Bak Bakao Saka, Ramsdale and Declan Rice being nominated for England. Um, where is next? Leandro Trussard was nominated for goal of the month by the Premier League. And of course, uh, manager of the month, we have the man himself, Mikel Arteta, getting nominated for man of the month. And when it, oh, I, I got to be careful with this. And when it comes to play, a Premier League player of the month, it's going to be a situation where it's going to be, uh, I mean, sorry, man of the, uh, player of the month for Arsenal for the month of September is going to be between William Saliba, Martin Odegaard, Declan Rice, and Bakayo Saka. Who is your Premier League player of the month? For me, the Premier League player of the month I would give it to Declan Rice, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And I'll also make a poll question for this in the community section. So if you want to vote in the poll, vote in the poll there, and let me know in the comment section who your uh, who your player of the month is for the month of September. Now, moving on to some more business that we that we have to talk about before we get into the Pedro Neto and and Ivan Tony stuff. I'm just going to ask you guys: Do you guys know that Urian Timber has a twin brother? Yes, Urian Timber has a twin brother who plays professional football. Also, yes, it is none other than the man himself, Quinton Timber. He plays for Fire Nord and he plays as a midfielder. Quinton Timber is now being linked to Arsenal. He's a 22-year-old midfielder. Yes, he's Dutch and he's Urian Timber's brother. He could also he plays in the defensive midfield position and he can also play on the left and he can and he's if I'm not mistaken, he's right-footed, though. So Quinton Timber is an option for Arsenal. We will have to wait and see if, if Arsenal do go in for him. But apparently Arsenal are interested in him. He's played in many positions in the past. He's played as a central midfielder. He's played as a defensive midfielder. He's played as a center back. He's played as a right back. He's played as a right wing. He's played as a right midfielder. He's played as an attacking midfielder. And he's played as a left uh, thing. Last season... For majority of the season for Fire Nord, if I'm not mistaken, last season he played majority of the season as a midfielder in the team. So that is that might be the reason why we want him. But let me show you guys what the article says. The article says that uh, Fire Nord midfielder Quinton Timber, the twin brother of Urian, has left a lasting impression on the scouts from several Premier League uh, Premier League big teams across Europe, including Arsenal sources. Uh, confirmed to 90 min. They've also mentioned the likes of Manchester United and Tottenham being some other Premier League teams that Quinton Timber could be joining. At this moment in time, this is merely speculation. We have to wait and see. But let me know what you guys think. If you guys have watched him, if you've watched enough of him, let me know. And my mistake, he doesn't. He hasn't played on the left. He actually plays on the right. As a he, he's played on the right as a right back and a right midfielder. So that's his main priority. That's made his main part of the pitch that he plays on. So let me know what you guys think about this potential January signing. Um, I don't know about uh, Quinton Timber myself. I don't know if that that's going to catch too much, if there's going to be too much on that one. But we're going to have to wait and see what happens with that one there. 
um, personally for me, it would be an amazing. It would be amazing if we if we had some more ambitious signings in the January window, like the next one. Yes, this is this is the one that you guys have been waiting for. This is the one that you guys wanted me to talk about. So big up Oli, obviously my guy Oli. He spoke about. Uh, this is he's very well known in the Arsenal community and knows a lot about what's going on at the club. And he says that Pedro Neto to Arsenal is in the works alongside with Ivan Tony. He's another top target con uh, connected as it's been made potential January move. Important few months ahead, full scope and logistics of the deal will be coming out very soon. Of course, I kind of paraphrased that. I didn't read it word for word. But would you rather I, Arsenal sign Ivan Tony and Pedro Neto or we go for Victor Ozyman? Because the the possibility of Arsenal signing Victor Ozyman has just recently become a possibility. I don't think Arsenal are going to actually go for Victor Ozyman. And I don't think Napoli would let him leave in this window. But this is another potential uh, situation there. Now, Enough about the the links from Oli. I'm gonna show you guys some more uh, some more concrete links also for about Pedro Neto to Arsenal because I've been seeing a lot of Pedro Neto to Arsenal stuff over the last couple of weeks, and these are not speculative links either. There's, some of them are very concrete links. So let's go through them. Uh, you also you have you have Alex Crook who works for Talk Sports saying Pedro Neto is back on Arsenal's radar. You have uh, Arsenal now talking about some of the links that that have been coming up with the January transfer potential of us signing Pedro Neto. We have to wait and see. Pedro Neto would be amazing cover for Bakayo Saka, and he would be another option that we could play on the right. And he could also play in a plethora of different positions, helping us in the attack with all sorts of different squad depth. This was just 10 minutes ago that people were saying Pedro Neto, the Pedro Neto links. So, yeah, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with that one. I just want to know, who says no to Pedro Neto to Arsenal? I don't think any of any one of us uh, here would uh, would say no to Pedro Neto. And it's just going to come down to how much money he would cost. Because in a January transfer window, transfers are always going to cost a lot of money. That's the honest truth, and we already know that. Now, let me just go to the final uh, talking point. Ivan Tony. I know Ivan Tony to Arsenal has been a story that I have been speaking about personally myself for a long time. If Brentford were to ask for 80 million for Ivan Tony, what would you say? Would you say yes? Would you say no? In the January window, if you have an opportunity to sign Ivan Tony for 80 million, would you say no? That's my question to you guys. Also, there's reports that Neto uh, ri uh, uh, rising higher on the agenda for Arsenal have asked uh, the, finan the finances uh, for the agent of Mendes. Certainly, one, uh, one to watch is also Ivan Tony, previously reported. Unlike, uh, unlike we get, unlikely we get both. Ooh, at least in the January, expect one to be in the door. That's interesting. That's interesting. So yeah, once again, I'm just going to ask you guys, 80 million for Ivan Tony in January, who says no? Or if you had a choice between one or the other, who would you go for? We've already spoken about all these other, other, other things previously. But yeah, as I said, if Ivan Tony, the Times is even reporting that 80 million would be the price for Ivan Tony. So if you guys are serious, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Uh, if Arsenal are serious, we go and we slap that 80 million on the table, get Ivan Tony in, or even try to give them Eddie and Ketia and give them maybe 60 mil on the side. That would be a deal I would be willing to do. But yeah, for now, this has been a quick little update video. Um, just to let you guys know, um, I will be doing a preview for the Man City game on Saturday ahead of the big game this weekend. In addition to that, I will also be doing, uh, we will also be doing a match... Uh, we'll, we'll be doing a, a Premier League preview on Friday at 8 o'clock. In the meanwhile, I'll keep you guys posted doing these little short uh, videos. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video in the comment section. And just to finish off, I'm going to tell you guys, at this moment in time, my predicted 11 for this upcoming weekend's game, that's including if Bakayo Saka is injured. So, of course, I'm going to have David Rea in goal. Let me know, do you guys have David Rea or anybody else? Who do you have in goal? Left back for this game, personally for me, I would actually go with 
Tommy Asu at left back. If that, it, let me know if you guys think that's crazy or not. But I would go with Tommy Asu. Of course, the centre back pairing is Saliba and Gabriel Magales. Uh, those are the two centre backs. Um, right back is going to be Ben White. I would actually drop Zinchenko for this game because I think we'd need more solidity defensively. Um, midfield three would be Declan Rice. I would return Thomas Partey back into the team and have Thomas Partey in the team on in that position playing. One second. In that in the position on the left eight, you'd have Declan Rice. In the in the sixth position, you'd have Thomas Partey. So Thomas Partey would be the deepest player out of the three. And Martin Odegaard would, of course, uh, be finishing off that midfield three. So I'm just going to show you guys what the image looks like. Uh, Trossard would, of course, be starting on the left if Martinelli is not available. We need Martinelli back as soon as possible. Up top is, of course, going to be Kai Havertz. If Bakaya Saka is not fit and available, that would mean Gabriel Jesus would be on the Gabriel Jesus would be on the right. So let me just show you guys my team before before we go. Uh, this is this is my team here. I was just literally making it as I was speaking to you guys. So this is the team right here. You guys can see that that's the team right there. And yeah, so it would be Tommy Asu left back, Gabriel Magalas, Saliba. Ben White back four, Partey, Declan Rice, and Odegaard, and then Trossard, Havertz, and Gabriel Jesus. That would be my team going into this game. Of course, if Martinelli or Bakayo Saka are fit, what I would do is I, it would be a situation where Kai Havertz would most likely still be on at, at striker, but you'd move Jesus. Uh, you probably move Jesus onto the left, one or the other. Either way, I think Bakayo Saka is going to be out. And I think Martinelli is going to be out. So I think this is going to be the situation where they're... But if we had if we had Saka, Saka's in. If we have Martinelli, Gabriel, Martin, Gabriel Martinelli's in. And up top would actually be Gabriel Jesus and Kai Havertz would be dropped this game if both Saka and Martinelli were available. But yeah, that's it for now. I'm going to bid you guys adieu. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Love for the love. Make sure you do hit that like button also and leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this video and you genuinely believe uh, I should be doing more of these. But yeah, I'm out of here, people. Love for the love. Peace.